Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. This is now the final question from the Pure Mathematics um, P3 International A Level at Excel January 2021 paper. And this question here is about differentiation um, of trig functions. Okay, so here it says, first of all, part A says, find the x dy in terms of y. Okay, normally it will say find dy dx, and you and you say how do I find dy dx? How do I make y the subject? Da, da, da. Um, no, you, what you have to do here is find dy dx, and then you can find dx dy first, and then you can find dy dx. See, they're kind of helping you out here. So instead of just lumping you in the deep end and saying show that dy dx equals this, they first told you a clue of what to do. So they're helping you out here. They said first thing you not need to do if you want to find dy dx is to first find dx dy. Differentiate x with respect to y because it's easier to do so uh, than to make y the subject so the x dy so i'm going to differentiate x with respect to y okay now what's going to happen here is uh, we have to differentiate three times sec squared to y let me get it ready first actually let me just get it ready first i'll say x equals now what this means is this is like three times now i know how to differentiate the secant of an angle the secant of an angle i know it's differential we can see this from the formula book it will tell us that the differential of secant x is secant theta, secant theta, secant theta, tan theta. That's one of the results that we have in our formula book. And I'll bring it along just to show you. Okay, so just to show you here, we have the formula book or just an extract from it. Um, that's relevant to what we're talking about. And you've got this little thing. It says differentiation f of x, f dash of x. And we can see that what we have here is secant of x the differential of secant of x is secant x tan x so what i'm going to do is i'm going to write this because this is this is secant squared 2y so to make it in that kind of form i'll put secant of 2y squared okay that's how it makes it a bit easier to think of this is like the secant of 2y all squared now what we can do here is we can use the chain rule because uh, this is like something that is inside a bracket okay it's like something squared so dif to differentiate something like this, you've got to use the chain rule. So it's the, the main function is something to the power of 2. To differentiate that, you multiply by the power and take 1 from the power. So I'm going to multiply by 2, that's going to give me 6. Then I'm going to take 1 from the power, so that's going to give me secant of 2y to the power of 1. And then I have to multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. So right now I haven't differentiated secant part. I've just differentiated this as like something to the power of 2. Right, so it's 2 times 3, which is 6, times whatever's there, as it is, to the power of 1. And then I do use the, the chain rule, so I multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. So now I have to multiply by the differential of secant 2y, which will give me secant 2y times tan 2y. Secant 2y times tan 2y. But then you see I have another function inside this function. I have 2y inside this function. So I have to multiply by the differential of 2y, which is 2, when you differentiate with respect to y. So I'm going to multiply that by 2. So I end up with, um, this is my dx dy, sorry. After I've, that's the x, this is now dx dy. Okay, I've differentiated this with respect to y, y now, so I have to write dx dy here. So this is dx dy, because I've started to differentiate it. Now I can, I can see I've got dx dy is equal to 6 times 2, which is 12. And I've got 2 secant 2y, so that's like secant 2y times secant 2y, which is secant squared 2y times tan of 2y. So now I have my differential of this in terms of y. That's part A done. Now for part B, um, we have dx dy equals this, and we've got to show dy dx equals this. Now we notice that what we have to show dy dx as has no y terms in it, just x terms. And we had originally that um, in the beginning of the question they told us x equals 3 sec squared 2y so we know that x equals 3 secant squared 2y so we have this identity here or we have this um, this that we have to use this to try to express all of these in terms of x not y okay so first of all let's just keep it as dx dy equals now 12 sec squared 2y now I, I see x is 3 sec squared 2y so i can write this as four times 3 sec squared 2y. So this was going to become replaced with an x. This is basically what x is. 
x is equal to this. Okay, so that's we got got rid of this and made it in terms of x now. Now I've got to think about how to deal with the tan of 2y. So I have to try to relate tan of 2y with sec squared of 2y. So the tan of an angle, how does it relate to the secant squared of that same angle? Well, I'm going to just make a little space here and go through some identities. Now we know, we know that the sine squared of an angle plus the cosine squared of that same angle is equal to 1. How can I relate tan and secant using this identity? We have the, uh, the reciprocal identities, which you should know, but in case you forgot them, that's why I'm going through in this way. Because it is easy to forget or we get mixed up, but this identity should be engraved inside your brain by now, and you can use this to derive any of the identities that you want, so you don't need to worry. As long as you know this one and the other one, which is that tan of an angle is equal to the sine of an angle divided by cosine of the angle. These are the only two identities you really need to derive all the others, if, as long as you understand what the reciprocal functions are. So, for example, now I want to deal with tan and secant. I want to have tan and secant, secant in, involved with this. So, I know that if I divide uh, sine theta by cosine theta, I get tan theta. And I also know if I divide 1 by cosine theta, I get secant theta. So, if I divide this whole thing by cosine squared theta, I'll get something which will might help us. Okay, so I'm going to have tan squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta. So now I can see that I have some sort of link between these these two. So I want to replace tan theta with something in terms of secant. So I know that tan squared theta is equal to secant squared theta minus 1. So what I can do here in my next step is I can start replacing these. So I have 4 times. Now I can replace this with x and tan 2y. I know tan squared theta is secant squared theta minus 1. So the tan of theta is equal to the square root of secant squared theta minus 1. Taking the square root of both sides. That means the tan of 2y is the square root of the secant squared of 2y minus 1. Okay, so I, I still haven't replaced it with x, but I've got it something closer. Because I know x is equal to 3 secant squared 2y. That means I can say, if that's true, let me just continue over here. If I know that x is equal to, as we saw there, if we know that x is equal to 3 times the secant squared of 2y, that means we can say that x over 3 is equal to the secant squared of 2y. So what I can do here is replace the secant squared 2y with x over 3. So I can say dx dy is equal to 4x times, now I'm going to write this as x over 3. So I've done it now. I've done it. I've made it in the right form. I've got rid of all the y's and all the x's. Now I have to just manipulate it to make it look like this, where I have to make sure that p and q are integers. Um, actually, p is irrational. We'll have some square root, maybe, a third, and q is an integer. So I have to write it as dy dx as well, so I have to invert it. So let me just simplify it before I invert it to make my life a bit easier. So dx dy is equal to 4x times the square root of, now I can make this under one denominator. Okay, one denominator. So let me make the square root a bit bigger. Okay, so this is going to be the, the square root of. Under one denominator, I can make this common denominator 3. This is x over 3 minus 3 over 3. So you get 3 as your denominator and x minus 3 as your um, numerator there. And that's exactly what we see here. So we're, so far it's looking good. We've got x minus 3, we've got x minus 3. So this is the same as saying 4x times the square root of x minus 3 over the square root of 3. That's the x dy. And it looks just perfect now because we want a ra irrational numerator, okay, and we want q as an integer, and we've got that because this is the x dy. What we want is dy dx, which is its reciprocal. So we end up with the root 3 over 4x times the square root of x minus 3, and we've gone and done it, haven't we? That's good. So we say p is equal to, we have this, it says stating the values of p and q, so, I mean, if you leave it like this, it should still be acceptable. It's better to actually explicitly state them saying p is equal to root 3 and q is equal to 4. So p is the irrational, is the irrational number. Yeah, p is irrational and q is the integer. That's right. So there we have our answer to number 11, oh sorry, 10, part b. Okay, so that's a nice um, kind of question about reciprocal trig functions, identities, and differentiation um, 
and you know so it's important for you to understand how to deal with these type of questions okay we're trying to make um, the differential of this in terms of x sometimes they might just say that right from the beginning they'll give you this and they'll say show find dy dx in terms of x okay or show that dy dx equals this and you you know here they gave you a clue start with dx dy and then you know try to replace the y terms with x's okay so that's part b is there a part c yes there is so it says find the equation of the normal to c at the point where y equals pi over 12 giving your answer in the form y equals mx plus c giving m and c as exact irrational numbers so here we have the information that we need we've got dy dx with the, the values that we found we've got x equals 3 sec squared 2y um, and we got these conditions that we're, we were given in the question so we got to find the normal to c at the point where y equals 12 okay so the normal of a curve is perpendicular to its tangent and the tangent of a curve has the same gradient of the curve at the point at which it's a tangent to the curve all right so now the equation of the curve is given by this formula x equals 3 sec squared 2y if we go back here we see that is the actual equation of the curve all right so now we want to find here in this question two things we want to find two things we want to find one the gradient that we need okay because we want the equation of a straight line which is the normal is a straight line and two we need a point on the line okay now on the point on the line okay where y equals pi over 12 so we know y equals pi over 12 we want to find the x value of that point so that's pretty simple the first first thing is we know that we have the equation all right of the line which is um, x equals 3 sec squared 2y so when y equals pi over 12 then x is going to be 3 times um, we can say the secant of 2 times pi over 12 which is pi over 6 and that's going to be squared okay because you got 3 sec squared 2y so we took the pi over 12 and we put it instead of the 2y that became pi over 6 and we square that, the secant of pi over 6, we square it and then multiply by 3. Now, if just to make life a bit easier for you, if you're not sure, we know that secant of pi over 6 is 1 over the cosine of pi over 6. Okay, and the cosine of pi over 6 is like the cosine of, um, um, thir of, of, cosine of 30 degrees, so it's root 3 over 2. So this is 3 times 1 over, this is root 3, over 2 squared okay the reciprocal of um, root 3 over 2 squared is going to be 3 over 4 so we get 4 over 3 so x equals 3 times 4 over 3 okay if we put that in our calculator you'll see you'll get exactly the same thing if we find 3 times and we have 1 over 1 over cosine of pi over 6 squared okay and we have to be in radian mode which we are we'll see that gives us four okay three times four over three which is four so i know that the x coordinate here is four so this is the point four pi over 12 that's the point at which we need to find the normal now to find the gradient well that's pretty simple we know we we know that um the gradient okay is going to be when uh, we're at x equals four we know dy dx is equal to root 3 over 4 times 4 times 4 minus 1 okay so we just replace x equals 4 inside the gradient function that will tell us the gradient at that point where x equals 4 which is root 3 over 16 times 1 so it's root 3 over 16 okay so that's the gradient that's the gradient of the tangent okay we want the gradient of the normal the gradient of the normal is equal to negative 16 over root 3 okay um, so we have that let's just write this as a, a, a rational form we're going to multiply both top and bottom by root 3 so you have minus 16 root 3 over 3 root 3 times root 3 which is 3 that's rationalized the denominator so that's the gradient of the normal okay so now we need um, to find the equation of the normal so we have the point which is 4 and pi over 12 
and we have the gradient of the normal now which is negative 16 root 3 over 3 so you have y we have to find it in the form what y equals mx plus c okay so y equals mx plus c so y equals let's say y minus y1 so y minus pi over 12 equals m which is minus 16 root 3 over 3 times x minus x1 which is 4 um, so I'll multiply both sides by 3 in fact I'll, what I'll do is I'll multiply both sides by what how do they want it again Ah, okay so forget it I'm not going to multiply both sides or anything I'm going to keep y as as it is because they don't want that as so I thought they were saying sometimes they say ax plus by plus c equals 0 where a b c are integers that's why I was trying to get rid of all the fractions but here they want y as a subject so we can leave it in this form so let's just expand the brackets we have minus 16 root 3 over 3 times x plus 64 root 3 over 3 and so we're going to have y equals minus 16 root 3 over 3 times x plus 64 root 3 over 3 plus pi over 12 we can leave our answer like that y equals mx plus c c is all of that together that constant but we've put everything in, in, in as exact irrational numbers okay m and c as exact irrational numbers so m you can see is an irrational number it's got root 3 and c which incorporates both of these together is also irrational because it's got root 3 and it's got a pi okay so those are both uh, um, irrational and they are both exact okay and that's the answer to this question which was the final question on this paper which was question number 10 from this p3 international a level um, january 2021 paper um, all the other questions you'll find in the playlist which are um, found in this link over here questions to do with this topic which is to do with differentiation and trig identities um, you'll find a playlist here maybe for trig uh, differentiation um, I guess the trig identities part will be in that as well I might put another link here for trig identities you can click on this link here to subscribe to my channel and along the top of the page you'll have found another card that shows some other p3 paper you might be interested in watching thank you for watching and um, see you soon